Hello, I'm John Van Luke Drummond, the Deputy Editor of Solicitor's Journal. Today I'll be putting questions to Lorraine Rogerson, who's the Independent Chair of Medco. She'll be giving a presentation at the Bon Solon Annual Expert Witness Conference on the 6th of November. Lorraine, to begin with, what is Medco? Medco is an independent, private company, which um, has a board of directors who are all drawn from the member organisations which represent each of the sectors. That body um, is charged with overseeing the implementation of the government's policy um, on addressing um, soft tissue injury claims and in particular Medco is charged with the provision of and the enabling the sourcing of medical reports from accredited suppliers. So our job is to assess, review, monitor and audit suppliers so they can to credit them and run a system which is the only way that now that um, since 6th of April when the law changed that these experts can be these reports can be sourced. In the last six months what have been the main teething issues you found at Medco? Medco um, although it was based on quite a lot of um, engagement by the Ministry of Justice with all the stakeholder representatives. It had from the beginning of this year when I came in, from pretty well standing start, although some work had been done, to get the system um, up and running by the 6th of April because the law was changed so that from the 6th of April you could only get medical reports in these cases, to support these cases, through this system. So although the policy um, were and the, the policy framework and the design of the system were very much set by the Ministry of Justice, the turning of that into a system that would work and that people could, could register on and, and, and so forth w was quite a, a big job. And then there have been, um, as has been widely kind of reported and discussed within the industry, some of the responses and some of the behaviours generated by the system, and particularly in response to the, um, the randomisation and the offer, both of which were policy decisions by the MOJ, as to you know, how many, um, what, from how many experts you could choose, from how many MRAs or experts you could choose in order to instruct. There have been some responses to perceived you know, possible um, disadvantages, um, competitive disadvantages, um, including multiple registrations by some companies and so forth, which have generated concerns particularly for the MOJ and which is why they, they indicated a, a month ago that they would, they would review this and the review is due to, to be um, coming out with conclusions, conclusions before the end of the year. Mm. Is the review too soon, do you think, or is it about right? Um, it's very difficult to say because it is early days, but um, there were there was such concern about a fa fast moving behaviours. The review isn't. I mean, my understanding is from the MOJ that the review isn't meant to be um, fundamental or you know all 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 bets are off type of review. It's very much about just checking some of these elements to see if it, the the policy framework needs to be tweaked to address some of the things about which they have the most concern. Obviously this is a huge change in the method of selecting experts mm -hmm. um, and there's obviously the mandatory accreditation as well that's been introduced. Mm -hmm. um, Medica have the remit of introducing this, um, why? It's part of the policy, mm -hmm. um, very much part of the policy. So the law was changed to provide that from the 6th of April this year you could only get a report from someone on the system. Mm -hmm. From the 1st of January 2016, you can only be on the system as a provider of medical reports, an accredited supplier, if you've passed the accreditation. So it's, it's, it's not a, an either or, it was very mm. much part of the whole scheme. The scheme is that Medco should provide um, reassurance to, to the public and to, to, to government that the people who are providing medical reports in these cases are part of an accredited system, um, monitored, reviewed, audited, trained, and that the links, potential links between those and the instructors should be severed. 
Who has to do the training? Uh, what about very experienced experts? Oh yes, everyone. Everyone who, from the 1st of January, the law will, requires that every expert on the Medco system will need to have done the training and be accredited in order to be instructed. What does the training include? Medco has an accreditation subcommittee that's been working on this, in fact, since before Medco was set up. So mm. there's been work being done on accreditation since before Medco was set up. We have had in place since since Medco was instituted an accreditation subcommittee which has been working with experts in this field who have been working on this and the way it's going to work is that we have um, will have um, contracted with suppliers to provide the training and accreditation um, these will these are well known well known in the field and the um, proceed, the process by which they were chosen was that um, there was uh, the accreditation subcommittee launched an expressions of interest round earlier in the year, which they had several um, expressions of interest. From that, they have undertaken a pre-qualification check and has examined the potential suppliers against various criteria, and they've chosen Bon Solon as one of these suppliers. Um, the um, Training will be launched on the 1st of October and the, so all those experts on the system will have an opportunity to go through the training and be accredited by the deadline of the 1st of January. And how many instructing parties are registered with Medco? We have um, up to date just, I think, just over 1,600 instructing parties and there are 260 MROs around 260 MROs and 700 direct medical experts registered on the system. And how many instructions have gone through the portal since Medco went live in April 2015? I advise I think there are just, about, just over 200,000 instructions. And what proportion of the instructions are through Tier 1 or Tier 2 or direct? I understand that over 190,000 of the instructions have gone to medical reporting organisations, MROs, and around 16,000 to direct medical experts. Some experts are registered in their own right and through an MRO. So, you know, the, uh, it, the, the, I can't give at this stage a sort of detailed breakdown of the data, but that's the current advice I have. Mm. And on the subject of peer review on the quality of reports, um, exactly what will be involved and who will be doing the review and how? That's still to be determined. Um, basically, we have an audit and we have an audit subcommittee which has been overseeing the setting in place of the audits of the MROs. We have nearly completed the auditing of the first tier of MROs and should have some reports on that um, for the board to consider later this month. The um, peer review of reports is something that is um, it's not as well developed, but we're looking into how that might work and um, should be able to make announcements shortly. And I understand mm -hmm. uh, you are auditing the MROs um, that are registering with Medco. Mm -hmm. um, what are you looking for during the audit? We as uh, just assess them against all the criteria, the qualifying criteria, but also um, look into a bit more detail as to how well they m qualify against the ethics standards, ethical standards that um, Medco has in place and um, really to, to what extent they both, um, that, that they, they match the requirements um, of, of, that have been set out by, by Medco in terms of the, their, their quality, um, the quality of, of, of what they do and their um, resilience as an organisation, as a body. What would you say are the current and future challenges that are going to face Medco? Um, the, it, it's been very challenging, um, I have to say. It's been very challenging, very interesting. And clearly, one of the things that it's time for us to do, to do is to, to make sure that more people know what we're doing um, and understand um, what we're there for and how, how they can help. One of the issues which has struck me as being um, of most potential and it's just in, starting to emerge from our operational subgroup which monitors day-to-day -day activity and takes reports from people about what's what's happening in the in the field in the area of registered experts and the provision of reports is some irregularities are coming 
forward mm -hmm. and when they do we're able to to step in and and ask questions and give warnings and start to increase compliance with what might be ex the expected standards um, and the the very fact that medco is there is is illuminating behaviors in in this area and this it's a fast moving and um, largely unregulated environment so there's some you know we're finding out new things all the time and this enables us to to develop the the approaches the the regulatory approaches and also gives the ministry and the stakeholders some idea of what's going on in terms of policy development for for policy development the um basically the challenge is to keep focusing on on medco's job there's a lot of noise and concern and criticism of medco some of which would be is is because too much may be being expected of medco or because people don't really understand the limits to what it's there to do so we need to focus on properly administering within the law what we're there to do and to um, encourage you know increasing quality and, and better behavior in this area Lorraine, thank you.